Well, here's the task at hand. I need to put a shaft seal in this unit right here. You see it's been uh, leaking pretty bad. All that noise you hear is uh, this air receiver over here. And uh, it's portable. That's putting air in the plant right now. Put a uh, compressor in this dryer about three weeks ago. I didn't bother putting a video up on it because how many of those things have you seen before? So, but at any rate, you got to uh, get this coupling element apart and separate the motor from the air end here. All right, got all the uh, coupling bolts out. It's a pain in the ass, really, because uh, you got small uh, clearance area right in the back side, right over here, where you don't really get the bolt out. That's why they got this little indentation and seal area right over here. But at any rate, we got all the bolts and the bell housing on, except for one. I just got to kind of block up the motor and slide it apart. All right, with the uh, back motor uh, bolts taken loose and some all thread or threaded rod put in the uh, bell housing to kind of aid, it's going to slide it apart. All right, got her separated and I uh, went ahead and removed the bell housing. Next thing is to clean up all this shit here. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Look at all that shit everywhere. As you notice, I don't wear gloves. Most good mechanics don't. All right, I'm going to use the jacking bolts here to remove the seal housing. These bolts here are just not quite long enough. I can get some uh, threaded rod in here to get that off. All right, got some longer studs in there. That ought to do it right there, I would imagine. this uh, round plate right here that's really holding down right there. There we go. Alright, after inspecting this I found that we've got a heck of a groove right here in the wear sleeve, which means it's going to have to come off and put a new one back on, and that is the hardest part of this whole job. And I don't have a the saw layer tool to do this, so I'm going to show you how I do it. With this puller on here in this fashion right here, and it's a uh, it's a Craftsman puller. It works on 10 series too. Oops, lost my light. Can you get the number off here? I can't really see it. If you guys, anyone needs a number, it's uh, let's see, 46905. Part number on there. W F E. 46905. Like I said, it works for the 10 series too. So that's all I gotta do is just, I've already cracked it and it popped right off there a little bit, moved a little bit. I was gonna pull it all the way off and then I'll take the new one and heat it up and slide it right on. All right, there we go. There is the wear sleeve. And it's got a heck of a groove in it. Big time. One thing you gotta, and here's the collar. Just, it slides on first and you can just grab on. It's a great design. Awesome, awesome design. A lot of these competitor ones like uh, Sol, or excuse me, uh, Ingersoll Rand, they don't even have this on here, either does Gardner Denver, which makes it for a real, real pain in the ass. 
So at any rate, now we just gotta do is heat up the new seal, sleeve rather, and put it in here. As you notice, this is a dummy shaft. It's not part of the air, actual rotor itself. One other thing here you gotta really be careful is you don't you don't disrupt your shims over here. As you see these are these are shims right here. They kind of move around, they're kind of stuck in place here, but you want to be careful that you don't lose these or misplace one or something of that nature. I just need to find a socket that I can, it'll fit the inside diameter of this and I'll drive this seal out, put a new one in. I'll clean this all up again now. Alright, and then we'll just knock this out like so. Now inch and 316 socket. Sockets work great for shit like this. She is all cleaned up, ready to go. Just got to pop the seal in her. All right, I uh, have this snap-on seal pusher, which actually works out just perfect, and uh, it just fits the uh, just uh, just perfect. So, because all I've done here is just take the uh, our insertion tool and push it all the way back flush because the cell air tool fits in there perfectly and they use an arbor press, but I don't have an arbor press here. Well, there might be one here, but I'm just gonna drive this in like you would a seal on a, uh, on a rotor on your uh, brakes on your car. It's basically all it is, really. All right, that's in there and flush. You wanna keep the tool in here, this little insert in here, because that's what's gonna aid everything sliding together if you watch the cell air video or not. Um, See on the other end here, it's just flush mounted. So now all we just got to do is get the old wear sleeve on the old shaft and then put it all back together again. All right, I'm going to heat the uh, wear sleeve with this torch right here. And I got this pencil that, mount, that melts at about 360 degrees, which would be better if it was about 250, but it's good enough. This kind of gets you in the ballpark, you don't really need it, but I'm going to use it anyway. And uh, we're just going to heat this on up, heat it up, heat it up, heat it up, and then touch the old marker to it. When it melts, uh, you'll know that it's up to temperature. And then I'm going to slide it on the shaft. At least I'm going to attempt to. Alright, so that slid on there pretty darn good. Uh, I probably heated it up a little bit more than what I really needed to. Uh, and you can see it's kind of got a little straw color to it. Which, you know, it's not a bearing. It's just a wear sleeve, so it's not like you can damage it. And I would just going to take and clean this up with some emery paper, and then we'll put the seal back in. One thing important to remember is that there is a chamfer right here. You want to make sure that you get that chamfer to the easy side, if you know what I mean. Is all cleaned up, ready to go. So you don't actually need the cell air tools to do this job. If you have a torch, you don't even need to have a uh, a really good uh, oxygen settling torch like I have here. You could probably just get by the propane torch, being that you only got to get it up to about 250 degrees, get it to slide on. So it's just a matter of sliding on the uh, the seal housing and putting it all back together again. All right, so I got a new O-ring installed here on the housing. I put the other piece back in here as the tool, it fits right on the shaft, and I uh, got a little oil on the uh, wear sleeve and we'll slide it back together again here, it should slide right in. I don't think I can get the bell housing on here with this thing on and I don't want to fight with it so 
Unfortunately, I'm going to have to do my work inside the hole here, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Alright, got it all back together except for uh, a few of the bolts here. Got a couple, man. These couplings are a pain in the ass. They got a strap around them, but they don't help out that much. Alright, on a different note here, I have a snap-on ratchet and I have a cobalt ratchet. And I don't think too much of cobalt tools here, and I can show you why. This son bitch will not fit on that bolt right there. No matter how you try, you can't get that son bitch on there. Stuck, no cigar. Now I'll make a switch to the snap on here. Alright, there's the snap on. Watch this. Right on she goes. Cobalt tools suck, guys. I've, I've ran across this before. They're made in China. They look really nice, but don't waste your money or your time. And that's about that. Pretty much. I had to move this over just a little bit. It was just a little askew, but other than that, everything looks really good. Give her the old test run here. Just got a couple of bolts to put on back over here. Outside of that, good to go. Alright, that was the old seal. It's really got a heck of a groove war in it.